Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to be talking all about color blocking and showing you how to color block a pattern. So let's get started. So what is color blocking? Color blocking is simply using two or more colors of fabric in one garment or other sewing project. For example, in the dress I'm wearing right now, I have chartreuse, green at the top, and then gray on the bottom. Color blocking can be done using existing style lines and not adjusting the pattern at all. For example, you might think of a raglan t-shirt, like a baseball tee, where the sleeves are in a color and then the body is white. That's a really classic example of color blocking. And for that kind of color blocking, you don't have to make any pattern adjustments. For example, my Alley sweatshirt is a sweatshirt with a yoke back and that really lends itself well to color blocking. So in this sweatshirt, I used a contrasting color for the yoke, the short sleeve cuffs, and the pocket. And this just gives an added visual interest to the sweatshirt. So this leads in to why you would color block. And one reason is to add visual interest like this dress or the sweatshirt. These are both really cute garments, but they'd be a little more plain, maybe a little bit more boring if they were just in one color. So using multiple colors is gonna create more contrast and visual interest to a garment. Another reason to color block is if you're looking to use up smaller cuts of fabric. For example, with this sweatshirt, I'd already made sweatpants out of the gold and the gray fabric, and I just had a little bit left of each. So I was able to figure out a way to make a whole new garment just using the scraps left over from another project. So if you have smaller cuts of fabric, either from scraps or remnants, color blocking is a really great way to use up those smaller pieces of fabric. So as I mentioned before, there are two different ways to color block. The first is using existing style lines like I did with this sweatshirt. If you're gonna use existing style lines, you just cut out the different pieces of the pattern using your different colors of fabric. For example, I cut the yoke in the pocket out of the gray and the rest out of the gold. But what if you want to add new style lines to a garment? For example, this is a hack of my Lou box dress pattern and I added this line to create color blocking. If you wanna color block areas of your pattern that don't have an existing seam line, you'll want to add those seam lines to your pattern. And if you've never done any pattern drafting before, it might seem a little daunting, but it's really very easy. And if you're new to sewing, it's a great way to start hacking your patterns. Let's look at some examples. All right, I'm gonna show you three different examples for color blocking, and all of these are going to be slightly different using different techniques. But the one thing I recommend anytime you're color blocking is first to do some sketches, um, generate some ideas and figure out what proportions you like best. Next, I recommend tracing your pattern, making a copy of it so that you're not damaging the original pattern. So for our first design, we're going to do a very simple design where we're dividing the pattern in half. This is a scaled down version of my Alu box top. This pattern is cut on the fold and because we're doing a symmetrical design, so it's the same on the left and the right, that means that we can continue to cut on the fold and we don't have to change that. So I want to divide my pattern right about here. So I'm gonna grab my ruler. I'm gonna use my underarm as a guideline and for this example, we'll just go two inches down from the underarm. Obviously, this is scaled down. Don't take these measurements exactly. And then we're gonna do the same on this pattern because I want my color blocking to line up. So when you draw this line, you wanna make sure that you go perpendicular to that fold line or green line. So we have our lines. And now you grab your scissors and we just cut right along those lines. So now we have 
four pattern pieces and we're going to have a seam line right here. So to maintain the integrity of the pattern and maintain the original length, we want to add a seam allowance. And you're gonna add a seam allowance at all the cut edges. So to do that, you can just bring another piece of paper and tape your pattern to the piece of paper and then use your ruler to add in a seam allowance. Obviously, this is not to scale. Okay, and then you can just trim this out. And we'll do the same thing for all of the pattern pieces. So here are four new pattern pieces. Just to recap, we cut along this initial line and then added a seam allowance to every cut edge. Then when we sew these together, we'll get a cool color blocked sign and it's the original length of the top. For this example, I wanna do something asymmetrical and curved. Now asymmetrical is meaning that the cut for the color blocking won't be the same on the left and the right. So I have traced my pattern so that I have the full thing here and we're gonna cut in a single layer instead of on the fold. So I'm gonna lightly sketch my curved design, something like this. If you aren't using tracing paper and can't see through your paper, you can get one good line that you really like and then cut it out. And then to get the exact same curve on the back, you can flip it over and trace the curve onto the back. We can cut our back pattern piece. So just like with our straight lines, we now have the top that's gonna to be one color and the bottom's going to be another color. And I need to add the seam allowance. So again, We'll bring in another piece of paper and we'll add the seam allowance to every cut line. Let's just tape this down. And then you can come in with your ruler and mark the seam allowance. Just at little notches. So just go around the curve every inch or so and mark your seam allowance away from that cut edge. And then you can connect those lines and use your scissors to cut out the pattern. And then you repeat that for every pattern piece. So here are all our pattern pieces with the seam allowances added. You'll cut the tops in one color and the bottoms in another color and just remember to cut them flat. Be careful that you don't wanna flip the pattern pieces over in different directions because these are not symmetrical. And also when you're sewing, remember that these cut edges of the fabric don't have the same length and they're not gonna match up exactly. So it's really that seam line where you're stitching that is going to be matched up exactly because we cut these pieces apart and we know that they are the same length. But you can also add notches to your pattern to help you line everything up when stitching. For this third example, we're using the Racerback tank top from my summer sweatsuit pattern. And I'm going to be doing some color blocking that is going to go across the front and the back, and we're gonna use a curve. So it's gonna be a little bit creative, but I think a pretty fun design. And it's also a great design if you don't have a very long piece of fabric. So we're going to be doing the straps and this top of the racer back in one color and then the bottom of the shirts in another. So a smaller piece of fabric can be used for the bottom of the tank top and then just scraps can be used for the straps. So first I'm gonna draw a line, just going like this. This is a symmetrical design, so I'm gonna cut everything on the fold and that'll make it easier to make sure that it looks the same on the left and the right. Then I'm going to draw a curved line right here. You could use a compass to do this to make sure you have a nice smooth line or just grab some sort of round object and trace it. So now we cut along 
here. Just like with the other examples, we want to add seam allowance to these cut lines. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I have my four pattern pieces and these bottoms are one color and then this top is another color. So you can cut these out in four pieces and sew it together or we can make this one pattern piece and eliminate the shoulder seam. So these two pattern pieces will go together like this and all we have to do is cut off the seam allowance. You can see here there's a dotted line for the seam allowance. You will probably have to draw the seam allowance into your pattern. So you just cut that off and then you could cut off this edge too or just overlap and put that cut edge against the other seam allowance and tape them together. Okay so now here's this one pattern piece. So now we've eliminated our shoulder seam and I can cut this piece on the fold in one color and then for the front and back bodies, I will cut one piece on the fold in our second color. Before we end, I wanna share a few tips for color blocking your sewing projects. First tip is to sketch the design before you alter your pattern or cut out your fabric. I recommend taking the line drawing from your pattern and sketching the new color blocking style lines on it. You can even use colored pencils or markers to color in the different colors and get an idea of how it's going to look after it's sewn. It's really amazing how different placements of the style lines will really change how the garment looks. So it's something that I really recommend planning out before you cut your fabric or your pattern. Number two, don't forget to add the seam allowance onto your cut lines. I know it's super easy when you're just going along and you cut a line right through your pattern to then cut your fabric right there, but it is important if you're going to be maintaining the integrity of the pattern and especially if you're making dramatic changes like an angled line, it's really important to add the seam allowance back anywhere you've cut through the pattern. I really recommend using fabric that has a similar weight. For example, this dress is the same fabric, just in two different colors. And this sweatshirt is two sweatshirt fabrics. One is a little bit lighter than the other, but they're pretty similar. It's especially important to use two fabrics that are a similar weight because those different weights of fabric are really going to behave differently. The exception would be if you're making something like a blouse with a peplum, it would be okay to use a lighter weight fabric for that peplum, but you'd wanna be careful about using a heavier weight fabric. So if you have like a light chiffon and, and you, then you attach a skirt that's made out of like denim or bottom weight fabric, it's gonna put a lot of stress and strain on that lighter weight fabric that's on top. So just be careful about that there are cases when you can successfully combine them but do think about how gravity is going to affect the fabric when you're combining two fabrics that are different along those lines it's a really good idea to choose two fabrics that you can wash in the same manner so you know you don't want to have one fabric that's dry clean only and then another one that can go in the washing machine because if you then throw it in the washing machine, it might fall apart. So just something to be aware of. Think about how you're gonna be washing this garment later. And the easiest thing is going to be if you use two fabrics that can be handled the same way. My last tip is avoid putting new seam lines that end where a bunch of other seams join up. For example, if I created a new style line that goes right into this armpit, I'm gonna get a lot of seam allowance bulk right here. And that might be uncomfortable and it also might be hard to sew. So just be a little bit careful with that. You, If you wanna have a line that goes and ends up here, consider ending that line above the seam line or below it, just so that you avoid kind of all the seam lines crashing together and being really difficult to sew and being really bulky. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Color blocking is a really fun way to bring personal style and a little bit of pizzazz to your handmade garments. And it's a great way to use up those smaller cuts of fabric, which is sustainable and something that I always love to consider when I'm sewing.
If you want more ideas for how to use your scrap fabric, I have a PDF with 101 ideas for using your fabric scraps, and you can get it for free when you sign up for my newsletter. There's a link to sign up down in the show notes. If you haven't already, I'd be so honored if you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to support this free content, you can buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. All the links are down in the show notes. And of course, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Happy sewing!